All right, welcome back. So we just finished talking about line-line intersections, and now the other sort of main thing you might want to know if you're intersecting with is going to be a line, uh, sorry, a circle or a segment of a circle, an arc. And so to do that, we're going to, again, uh, need a little bit of algebra and math and a little bit of geometry to get us there. Now, again, if all you need to know if the line intersects with the circle, there might be a slightly simpler way to do it, but this is going to also calculate for us the points at which we intersect. And so, again, just to remind us a little bit of geometry here, uh, there are going to be three different ways we could potentially have a line interacting with a circle. There could be no intersection at all. There can be sort of what we might normally uh, think of an intersection is a secant where the line sort of goes in one side of the circle and out the other side. And then there's also going to be the tangent, which is just going to be the special case where there's only going to be exactly one line of intersection, and that's going to be where the, the line, or sorry, one point of intersection, and that's where that line touches the edge of the circle ever so slightly. So we're going to see here that the math that we have involved for calculating where the uh, point of intersection is going to be is going to also uncover that there may be these three cases or three possibilities, no intersection, one intersection, or two intersections. All right, now the actual math we're going to use is what we used in the last video. Y equals mx plus b is going to be our equation for a line. And then we're also going to use an equation for a circle. Now, if it's been a while since you uh, looked at an equation for a circle, a circle is special because it's going to take this x coordinate and ignore the little offset for a second and the y coordinate and we're going to square them and then we're going to set that equal to the radius. So if we just had x squared plus y squared equals r squared, that would give us a circle around the origin, 0, 0, of radius r. Now, the minus c and the minus d that we put in here actually move that origin to some other point. And what point is it going to be? Well, point cd. Okay, and so if we think of that, if we plug in position cd here, okay, that's going to give us zeros. Okay, which means that's going to be the origin of the circle that we're trying to draw here. All right. Now, again, if you haven't explored uh, equations for a circle, you maybe want to go take a step out and go refresh yourself on what an equation for a circle is. But other than that, we're just doing some algebra. Uh, the same thing that we did in the last one, we've got two sort of equations here. These are not two linear equations anymore. This is a quadratic equation. But with these two equations, we can solve for our, our value that, well, the one that we're interested in here, our x, and then use that to calculate our y. So we've got our y equals mx plus b. We're going to use that to plug in for our y in our circle equation, which gives us this instead. And then, while this is a quadratic equation, so go bust out your, you know, your your algebra textbook and go look up your quadratic equation. We can go grab the quadratic equation and then the quadratic equation requires us to have write our, our quadratic formula here in a specific way. Now, if you remember your uh, quadratic equation, then you know that it's going to have three possible outcomes. There might be no solution to the quadratic equation. If there's no solution, that means there's no intersection point. If there's one solution to our quadratic equation, which happens occasionally in a special case, then that means we're in a tangent case. And if there is two solutions, that's more normally what we get out of the quadratic equation, then we've got our secant. And those two different, the two different solutions that we have will be the two x coordinates of the intersections. And we can calculate the y coordinates as we did before by plugging them into one of our equations. Okay, we have a little bit of work to do before we can actually take our idea, um, which we sort of just waved our hand at so far, and turn it into code, which is something that can actually calculate a intersection point for us. So to do that, first of all, I've got reminding us of our, our quadratic formula or quadratic equation here. This is what our quadratic equation should look like, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, if we want to use this quadratic formula to calculate our x's for us. And so 
we, we want to look at what we start out with here. This is where we are right now. This is the formula we have for our circle when we plugged in the intersection point for our y here. That's going to eliminate the y's at least, so at least we have a quadratic formula here now, but it's not in the right form. So let's do a little bit of effort quad algebraically to turn this into the right form. So the first thing I'm going to do is square these two terms. Squaring the first term, this one's going to be fairly easy. We're going to get x squared, and then we're going to get minus 2xc, and then we're going to get plus c squared. Squaring this one, I'm actually going to use the exact same formula. I'm going to lump these two together just because they're both constants. This is the x term, this is not. That's just going to make it a little easier on me, save some of the math. So here we're going to get an m squared x squared plus 2mx b minus d plus b minus d squared. And I'm just going to leave that as is. I could square that out again and get a bunch of terms, but I don't need to. I'm going to leave it as is. Oh, the other thing we need to do is, is if we want to get this in the right form, we can't have something on the other side. We can't have r squared on the other side. So I'm going to move the r squared over to this side. That's going to give us a minus r squared equals zero. And now we're in the right form. Well, except we haven't yet gathered all of our terms right. We haven't, got, we haven't figured out what our a, b, and c are, but at least we've expanded things out so we have x squared terms, x terms, and constant terms. Now let's gather our x terms. So we've got this x term, or sorry, x squared term, and we've got this x squared term. So let's write those together. I'm going to write this as 1 plus m squared times x squared. That's my x squared term, and then if I'm keeping track of things, I should maybe cross off what I've got on that top line. Keeping track. What else do I have? I want this x term and maybe this x term. Let's turn them around a little bit here and write it as this one here. I'm going to have this one which is 2m b minus d. It's looking kind of ugly. It's going to keep getting ugly, I guess. And then over here we have minus 2c. Minus 2c. Well, I'll leave it like that for now. Um, it doesn't really matter if I can simplify it more. All that matters is I've gathered all my x's together for now, okay? So I've gathered all my x's, and, and let's see, this one, and this one, okay. And then we've got all of our constants left. So we've got plus c squared plus b minus d squared minus r squared equals zero. All right. Of course, now I realize I've used B's and C's down here and B's and C's up here. Let's just try and save ourselves some confusion. Let's call these ones all B primes and A primes. Same thing up here, just to keep them different in our mind. Because now what we want to do is we want to say to ourselves, okay, what is A prime going to be equal to? It's going to be 1 plus M squared. What is B prime going to be equal to here. It's this sort of ugly thing. Let's see here. I can at least pull the 2 out and then maybe I'll just leave the rest here. What do we get? M, B. I'll leave it as B minus D, although I could distribute that out here. Minus C. That's my B prime. And then my C prime is what's left over here, which is my C squared plus B minus D squared minus my r squared. Now why are these important? Because in my code I'm not going to do a bunch of algebra, I just want to jump to this. I just want to take my m's and my b's and d's and r's and, and things that I already know and plug them in and calculate a prime, b prime, and c prime. Now the other stuff that is important for us to remember is that we need to know how many solutions there are going to be to our, our, our problem. Once we've calculated this much, once we've got these guys, these values calculated, we can go up and plug them into this formula here and that's just, then we're done. We can, we've got our x, again we can find our y and then we're really done. Um, but what we need to know ahead of time is what is this going to give us? Is this going to give us a solution, no solution, or two solutions? And the way we're going to find that is by determining what's happening with this square root up here. Okay. Now, this square root is called sometimes the discriminant, and this is going to tell us how many solutions we're going to get. Because, remember, taking the square root of a negative number is, at least in normal math, something we're not supposed to do. And so if this is a negative number, this is when we get zero solutions. 
if this is zero, if this value under the square root here is zero, then we will have a tangent. We'll have exactly one solution. And if this value underneath this is not, that's positive, that's when we're going to get two solutions. And those two solutions arise from our, our plus and our minus here because we've got one that's from a plus and one that's from a minus. All right, so how do we calculate if we've got a collision? So again, the very first thing I'm going to do is use that quadratic formula and the calculations that we just made to calculate my A, B, and C so I can plug that into my quadratic formula. So again, my A, by our definition in our notes, was 1 plus m squared, m being the slope. So here, this is indeed 1 plus m squared. Again, I've just converted my notes into at least the names that I've given them uh, here in my code uh, for the various values, our a, b, c, and so on. And I've just converted them here so we can calculate now our a, b, and c from the quadratic formulas perspective. Here, I compute the discriminant. The discriminant, again, remember, is going to tell us how many solutions we have. And so I check in the special case where the discriminant is equal to zero, then we have only one solution. So I return only that solution. If I happen to have greater than zero, meaning we have a secant and two solutions, then I return both of those solutions here. I'm just plugging in. This is just the uh, discriminant. This is taking the square root and again, adding it to minus B or subtracting it from minus B to get my two solutions according to the quadratic formula. And of course, in both cases, dividing out by 2A. And otherwise, there are no solutions. So I return nothing. And again, the only additional logic I've got here is that when I now check to see if I've collided with a circle and I've collided, now remember that might give me, return to me a list of points. So I iterate through those list of points and if those points, again, same check, if they happen to be on the line segment that we were interested in, not just the infinite line, I'll color them red, otherwise I'll color them gray. Otherwise, this is the same logic as before. And we can see, maybe we'll just reload here, that when we add some circles in, again, we can do different kinds of calculations. Is the intersection point on the line, the infinite part of the line, or on the line segment itself? And again, all of our calculations be computed. So if you are interested in, again, using this to just sort of test out your own code or borrow some of this code for your own calculations, uh, you're welcome to do so. There's going to be some links down in the description below. All right, that's everything for this video. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.